So the title of my presentation is, is Implications of the Blockchain Toward a uh, Comprehensive Research Agenda. And I added something here for smart cities. And I'm going to show you in a second why. Because when I first submitted my first draft to this conference, that was about half a year ago or something like that. And many things have changed in between. So I guess all of us live in some kind of bubbles. So if you're in a, a computer science bubble, for you it's more, everything is evolving steadily, that's my guess. If you're more at the business side, then the blockchain happened out of nothing. And um, so first I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Horst Treibelmeier. I'm the head of the Department of Inform uh, International Management at Modul University in Austria. Most likely you have not heard the name. It's a very young university with a research focus. It was founded 10 years ago and uh, it's mostly focusing on tourism. But nowadays we got so many business students that they decided uh, to hire me two years ago to build up a management department. And I was, um, when I came to Modul University, I was reconsidering my research area, which is a good thing to do every couple of years if you're in information systems, because things change. And then I figured out at that time, uh, blockchain might be really interesting. I was teaching Bitcoin for a while, my students forced me. Uh, they didn't force me to buy Bitcoin, unfortunately. So I was just teaching it, I, I didn't buy it. <laughs> uh, so, but I never got so much into finance. So, uh, but when I really started understanding what blockchain is doing, I, I really got hooked and I, I, I thought that's a really interesting idea and nobody else is doing research in that area in information systems, I have to say. And so that might be a, a, a niche, a, a wide ocean, so to say. Uh, before that, I was doing research in gamification, so I'm still publishing some papers on gamification. And I'm also interested in ep epistemology and the uh, methodology, but mostly now it's uh, blockchain and uh, DLT. So uh, a little bit of advertising, not so much for myself, but might be interesting for you. A book of mine uh, is coming out. I'm editing it. It contains 23 chapters. It's called Business Transformation Through Blockchain, and hopefully I can get some funding for open access so you don't have to pay for the chapters. Anyway, if you're interested in something, you can follow me in Research Guard. Just send me an email, and I can uh, give you preprints at any time. And uh, um, the response for the book was so good that we are publishing it in two volumes. So you can see here is volume one and volume, oops, it's not what I wanted. Volume one and volume two. And uh, everybody was asking me about blockchain use cases. So I decided to edit another book with Springer and the deadline for that is next year in May. So if you're interested in publishing a chapter on some kind of use cases, then uh, just let me know. And if you have some failures, that would be even better. Because, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, academic journals nowadays, they only publish success stories. But it would be so good to learn from failures. So if you have something you cannot publish anywhere because it didn't work out, but if you can tell me why it didn't work out, then it might be really interesting for this book. Yeah, uh, this is something I don't need to go into detail in this community. Uh, again, uh, talking about blockchain, even in information systems, that's my background, two years ago, nobody was talking about it. So uh, you all know these things. Oh, it, it might be hard to read. On this slide, it's taken from a paper from Narayanan and Clark from 2017. It's called Bitcoin Academics Pedigree. You see all those kind of technologies uh, Bitcoin and blockchain is based on. We have we had good discussions today and yesterday about proof of work, bits and in fault tolerance, and so on. So it's a long history because many people in business think blockchain came out of nowhere. Um, but one th interesting thing happened. A couple of books came out. This was 2015, uh, Melanie Swan, Blockchain um, like Economy. And especially in 2016, I'm not sure if you know these books. They're not very technical. They are just contain lots and lots of use cases. So very creative. And what happened after that? After the books got published, you got so many publications coming out in journals like Harvard Business Review or Sloan MIT Management Review. And then suddenly, out of nothing, uh, business was taking notice. So what happened? You have all these uh, technologies that have been discussed in computer science and cryptology for a long time. And then all of a sudden, businesses were finding out, oh, there's something maybe we can use. And they created the hype. And what was left in between were academic communities, for example, like information systems. And I can show you what I mean. So here we have uh, Bitcoin transactions. You all know these figures. This is starting in 2009 when the first client came out. And nothing happened in the first couple of years. And 
Uh, I recently read a, a book from Murray Rothbard. He's a libertarian economist uh, from 1962, 1962, yes. And he said it's not possible to create a money out of nothing. But Bitcoin has done exactly that. But not much has happened in the first couple of years and then the hype happened. Yeah, you all know that. And so what I did, I looked at academic databases, business databases. I'm not talking about computer science now. And uh, I took one EBSCO host, Business Source Premier. And I looked at recent years and uh, this database contains all kinds of academic journals, let's say from business, from marketing, uh, uh, law, supply chain, and so on. And you can see the first academic papers that came out uh, concerning the, the, the word Bitcoin was in 2012. So there was a huge gap in between. And the most interesting thing is, of course, blockchain. And first papers were coming out in 2015, only a handful. And what you can see, here we have an exponential growth. And from 2018, uh, you have to at least double the amount of papers we are having here. So there's a huge wave of ac academic papers coming. And all of that happened in the last one or two years. So when I first planned this uh, presentation today, uh, my idea was to show what academic research uh, needs to do, how we can pool forces and how we can make interdisciplinary re research. But I don't think that's necessary anymore because two weeks ago I was at an information systems conference and I think uh, the single most hyped topic was blockchain. I think there were more than 10 blockchain papers there. So there's a huge wave of papers coming first at conferences, then at journals. So with a delay of two or three years, we can expect many publications coming up. It's just that we are so slow in academia. And in the in, uh, information systems community, we also have the discussion, are we relevant uh, uh, enough for the, for the community and for business? And uh, I think this is a case where we can blame ourselves for not being fast enough because businesses are coming to me and asking me for advice and I feel that we as information systems researchers, we should somehow bridge the gap between computer science and business. That's our purpose. So um, what I'm going to do now, it's, it's a little bit of a jump because I'm not on, only uh, a professor at Modul University, I'm also on the board of the City of Blockchain. This is an association in Austria that's uh, promoting blockchain technology and the founder of that association is Uwe Umlauf, and um, he's also the chairman. And he invited me a while ago to join, and I was happy to do that. I wanted to see what's going to happen. And the initial idea was to find uh, companies promoting blockchain, and, but it didn't really work out because there was too much of a hype. There were so many meetings, and uh, basically the same things were being discussed every time. So he changed his strategy a bit, and he decided to focus more on smart cities. What's a smart city? And everything with a background on blockchain and DLT technology. I'm not going into any details here. We don't care so much about a specific definition. But smart city is uh, when investments in human and social capital and IT infrastructure fuel sustainable growth and enhance quality of life through participatory governance. And you can see there are many ideas included here which we have discussed either today or uh, yesterday. And why is this so important? Because there is an estimate that in about 23 years from now, 80% of the global population will be living in cities. So we need to do something to make them more uh, comfortable, durable, and secure. And those would be the goals of the city of blockchain. And the good thing is we are living in Vienna, and Vienna has a really comprehensive smart city framework strategy. And what you can see here, that's what I mentioned before, uh, we really focus on technologies that employ blockchain, cybersecurity, IoT, and uh, artificial intelligence. So everything is very broad. And uh, the reason why I'm presenting this today is because uh, this is an association. This is a platform. We are looking for exchange. This is not something that we are doing. I'm not standing here and saying, hey, this is what I'm doing exactly. But I'm telling you uh, what our mission is, what we have in mind. And if you're interested in participating, that would be great because all the papers that I've seen in these two, two days, even if they were very technical, then chances are you have some kind of solution that might be very important for some applications that we want to develop later on. And uh, when I'm talking to businesses, they always ask me, what are the use cases? And if you have some very simple use cases, sometimes they're not happy about it. For example, the city of Vienna has a use case. They were trying out blockchain technology. They were using tokens for... Um, giving out lunch 
for government employees. So that's not very spectacular. Why do we need blockchain for that? But they were trying out the technology. And I think there should be something in between those tokens heading, uh, giving out for lunch. And we had uh, the, the central bank money. So you need to get used to the technology. And currently, I'm writing a case study for, for colleagues from Italy. And they had some blockchain projects before. And they told me. Uh, didn't really work out, it was a failure, but they learned so much, so the next project was a huge success. So it has to be stepwise. And uh, so this is a worldwide initiative, and Uwe Umlauf, he's the uh, director at Toli, but he's also in Steinbeis, and he has a worldwide network already. And uh, we are internationally well connected, and we want to reach out even more, of course. There should be high visibility for all stakeholders. So the idea would be that there is really an exchange of ideas. So like at a conference where you present something, you have some kind of solution that others might find useful, then we can discuss it and we can see how to apply this one. And there should be a direct access to best-in-class corporate and startup solutions. So how many uh, Facebooks on blockchain do you need? I, you know, they steam it. We've mentioned that yesterday, and, and another present in, presenter in the evening mentioned uh, NPO solutions for, for registering refugees. And so I think if you have a couple of solutions in place, then that's all you need. And there is only one Facebook, and there is only one iTunes, and so on. And uh, chances are we might see the same thing for blockchain. So there's one really good solution, and it, it will spread out. And yeah, the idea is to build smart cities and we want to combine blockchain and artificial intelligence. So how could that look like? And this is really a simplification, but just to give you an idea, and I know that you have a technical background. Some of you might, might find it a little bit too uh, oversimplified, but in a nutshell, we are taking all kinds of data, and as you know, we get more and more data over time. And in combination with blockchain, we create trusted data, whatever that means in a big context, then we take the trusted data and we apply some kind of artificial intelligence. Again, there are many different options and machine learning, deep learning, and so on, but uh, this is a huge play, playing ground for many, many highly sophisticated research. What we get here is smart trusted data. So we take the smart trusted data and then again we apply some blockchain technology, for example, smart contracts and distributed autonomous organizations, and we end up with autonomous systems. And finally, we take those systems and combine it with smart citizens, and then we get our framework. And so you can see many, many fields in here, and this would be some kind of research agenda, if you like, that I mentioned in the beginning. So the title of my topic is a research agenda. There's everything in here, or not, not everything, but many things in here. But it's not that we are starting uh, at the very beginning, we already have a couple of prototypes. So basically, we have six different areas, and you will see they, they cover a lot of ground. So we are not doing research and, and applications in any of those areas, but again, it's more like an invitation. And uh, so on the upper left, you see smart governance. We have heard today about <coughs> how governments can employ blockchain technology, for, for example, e-voting or um, money. Then we have the environment. We have smart infrastructure. Energy is a huge field, of course, with blockchain. We have smart mobility. Supply chain management is another academic community that has a huge delay when it comes to publishing uh, blockchain research. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, there is not a single uh, paper being published in one of the leading uh, supply chain management journals on blockchain or DLT yet. Uh, smart economy, yeah, sorry. And finally, smart living then we uh, include the people and, and homes. So I told you, we, we already have examples here. And I picked one example for each of those groups. So it's not only a conceptual framework. No, we are collecting um, use cases, or we even work together with them. And so some things are really happening. I, I do this pretty quickly, because I know I'm standing between you and the final break. So uh, smart governance, we have uh, one use case here that's happening in Austria. It's called OGD, or uh, the change protocol and notarization. It's basically an, um, a use case where um, citizens of Vienna can check whether some data was already there at a specific uh, point in time. So that's really a use case of blockchain. So it's really open governance, open data. When it comes to smart environment, um, we have a platform here that's called Sensi or Sinzi, 
and it's about energy demand forecasting to make better predictions for energy demand and to be able to be in a better position to uh, distribute energy efficiently. When it comes to smart infrastructure, there is another energy example. Uh, there's a part in Vienna where they are conducting this project that's called Viertel 2. And the idea is to have uh, consumers participate in product development for energy services. Smart mobility, um, this is another blockchain application. It was mentioned in one of the previous presentations how IBM and Maersk were working together. And this is huge. I mean, those projects cover the whole supply chain. Um, that's a little bit too much for us, I would say. So we are focusing on small uh, use cases that we can handle. And again, this is done um, basically by Steinbeis together with Cargometer. And what they are doing, they are uh, trying to make the supply chain a little bit more efficient by um, measuring freight, so measuring the weight, and putting the data on the blockchain, because there's a lot of noise in the data when it comes to weight measurement. So smart economy, we have some kind of virtual um, blockchain system, if you like, that's called Kettenbruck. It's not really a city. It sounds like an Austrian city, but it's not. It's really virtual. And it's like a playground for blockchain innovations. And this is done by one of our chancelleries. So they have a lot of experience already with blockchain. They started a couple of years ago, and they're doing things like that just to figure out in what ways blockchain can be useful for the government. And uh, finally, we have also Smart Home on Easy Living. That's an application called Indigios, and the idea is to collect much data from users in smart homes and to use the data in combination with artificial intelligence in order to improve certain parameters of smart living. So, uh, as I told you, um, it's not that we are alone. Um, we are based here right in Vienna, but um, my colleague Uwe Umlauf has a, a rich network. So, there are many cities already which are to some extent involved with us. Most of those are personal connections. So, we are growing also fast. And here you can see uh, part of the ecosystem. So, we are... Um, hostings, let's sort of say a couple of st uh, startup solutions. We're working together with the public sector. And the, the cool thing about Vienna is that's one of the most livable cities in, in the world, I might say, and uh, that we have a lot of backing from Vienna. So uh, they are trying out a lot of things, and they are very easy to cooperate. We are working also together with some big companies and consulting firms, and also, of course, with research and education institutions. So, um, what are the plans for the future? Again, I'm reaching out to the academic community, but also the practitioner community. I'm also looking for startups. And we have all these different working areas. And we would like to organize also meetups in which we discuss certain areas. And uh, ideas to come up with business use cases and to have hopefully implementations. And of course, also publications, because in the first place, I'm still an, an academic. I depend on publications. And we also want to have a big blockchain event in 2020. So, um, yeah, it would be great if you would let me know if you're interested. And uh, hopefully there's another chain in event. I'm not sure what's planned. Uh, I have to say I really enjoyed being here and seeing what's cutting ed edge research when it comes to computer science and cryptography. And, yeah, if you have any further questions, just let me know or uh, shoot me an email. Thank you. for the comprehensive and concise <laughs> <laughs> talk. So questions, comments, please. How many academics are in the room? Just to, to let me know. Oh, quite a few, yeah. So. <laughs> um, so question, have you, is there some leverage coming from um, the city government? Um, because there are certain things that, like I'm in the industry, but with these projects, there are always certain things that only the city government can do or allow, right? So is there some unique support that they're giving? Yes, uh, that's, that's a good thing. We are directly in contact with the uh, City of Vienna CTO, Ch Chief Technology Officer. So there is some support. They are even launching their own initiatives. And for example, I was applying for a couple of projects, EU projects or NATO. And it was relatively easy to get them as partners because, you know, sometimes it takes really long to find some official partner to get the signature. So they are really 
are supporting the project and they're launching their own initiatives. I think I had it one, on one of the previous slides. Let me see if I find it. They have their own initiative and the, yeah, here it is. It's called Smart City Vienna Framework Strategy. It's a white paper, it's online. I'm just not sure if it's in German or if it's also in English, but they have a smart city strategy. And they, it, my feeling is they are really happy to have others contributing because basically what we are doing, we are helping them. And I'm an academic, so I'm paid by the university, but I'm happy to contribute because I feel it's also my responsibility giving something back to the state. And I'm very keen on working together with the industry because it also gives me a feeling what's important for the students because we also need to teach them. We had a slide yesterday showing what we need to educate them and it's not happening right now. I, I'm talking about Austria. So there's a huge gap when it comes to blockchain related education. Okay, thank you again. Thank you very again. much. Thank you.